Welcome everyone on this course on SAP Best Jobs. In our life, most probably we have used SAP Jobs uh, to schedule some standard functionality or some of the bespoke functionality. And also we design a lot of our processes that some of the heavy Computa computationally heavy processes are not done online, let's say when you save a document, but uh, they are processed, uh, uh, let's say, overnight in an overnight batch job. Uh, so we need to use batch jobs for various uh, uh, business scenarios. And if you work with uh, uh, many different clients, then you probably have also found that uh, quite a few of them are using third-party uh, scheduling tools because while a SA, the standard SAP lacks some of the features that sometimes we use either in terms of scheduling or in monitoring. But there are some advanced options in the standard SAP as well, but they are not so easily accessible. For example, they are not so easily available in SM36 or SM37, most of the transactions that we use, but there is a way how to work around those and then create some sort of advanced scheduling. The one thing that I'm going to talk about today or in this course is how to schedule jobs to run one after each other and how to do it periodically. If you have worked with batch jobs, then you probably know that there are um, standard functionality available to uh, schedule a job that starts once another job completes, but that cannot be made uh, periodically. So if you set up a job like this, then once the, you know, the first job completes, then your job is going to run again. But if your first job runs again, because let's say it's set up to run overnight, then on the next day, your second job is not going to get triggered because that condition doesn't work periodically, unfortunately. So in this course, what we are going to look at is how to create that sort of periodic job, which starts when another job completes and how to use that to create some sort of parallel slash less serial processing which uh, well you might uh, need to do in in certain cases the example that i'm going to look at is a um, is a process that i had to schedule in crm where uh, for technical reasons I had to break up the, the big batch jobs to, to multiple variants and uh, the, the way the program is designed that it one of the input parameters is a, a, is a value which is country specific. So I would have a multiple uh, variants that I want to run. So for example I have uh, countries uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G that I need to process and out of these uh, countries let's say that I have three countries that are big. Let's say that's country A and B and C. So I want to run, after, I want to run them one after the other because at the um, well, the way the SAP job, well, the SAP program is uh, is written, that in itself it does parallel processing. So I don't want A and B and C run at the same time because they um, process a huge number of. Uh, records at the same time and for every let's say 1000 record they create a parallel um, a process so I just don't want too much load in the system so I say okay I'm just going to run A, B, A, B and C one after each other but once these three uh, variants complete or three, these three countries complete I have uh, let's say another f uh, four countries that I want to run but now I can run them parallel, so I can run two jobs, uh, sorry, two countries at the same time. So I thought I would have a job two, which is going to process uh, country D, and once that completes, is country E. But then at the same time, I want to also process uh, F and G. With the uh, standard SAP, you, I can set up these three jobs. So job one is going to have three steps. It's going to process variant A, B, and C. Job two, job 2 is going to have two steps uh, for variant D and E, and job 3 is going to have, uh, two, again, two steps for F and G. And of course, well, this is a fairly simple model, but of course it can get a lot more complicated than that. Obviously, you would schedule job 1 to start at a specific time, let's say 3 a.m. every morning, but uh, you can't schedule job 2 and 3 to start when job 1 completes and do it every day, because as I said, that after job 
option is not periodical. So the only option you have is just to set up a fixed time. So let's say if job run, if job one runs for two hours, then you can set job two and three to run, you know, two hours later. So let's say 5 a.m. Uh, the problem is that if the job uh, one overruns, then you run into the situation that you wanted to um, uh, avoid in the first place, where your you know big countries are running parallel with some of the smaller countries. So you, what you really really need is some sort of trigger at the end of job one, which says, "Now I have completed job two and three. You can start now." So this is what we are going to do in the next uh, step of this course. But before we actually go into the system and do each of these steps, I just want to quickly summarize the, th the four things or the four steps that you need to do in order to set a, an even base trigger like this. So the first uh, step is well, you actually need to create an event. So there are background events in the system that you can configure. So you can create your own in transaction SM64. So you just go to SM64, you click on the new button and you create a new event. So in my case, I just called it Z even batch to test these batch processes. That's the first one. That's a fairly easy um, maintenance activity. So it's not a customizing entry. The next step is that you have, you, you need a way to actually trigger that event. And in SAP, there is a program which is called BTC underscore event underscore raise. And it is available in, in one of the SAP service packs. So if you have a recent SAP system, you most probably have this program. So you run this program and here you specify the background event that you just created in step one. And you can also specify an event parameter because you can use this event with many different parameters. So if you want, uh, let's say after job two and three, you also want to trigger something else. You don't have to create a new event. You can use the same event, but just use different parameters. And we are going to see how this parameter is going to um, be used uh, later on. So you do this in, in this program in SE38 and you save this screen as a variant. So once you have that, then you can schedule or you can create job one. Uh, so job one is going to execute, you know, uh, country A, B and C. In my case, I just put like, you know, one test variant of, you know, some program, but of course it can be anything. And in order to trigger the actual event, you add yet another step into this job where the program is BTC underscore event underscore phrase and the variant is the variant that you have created in the previous step. So that will run this program that is going to raise the event with this specific parameter, which we have specified here, which is called step two. And you schedule this job normally. So let's say, you know, periodically run every day, like 3 a.m. Yeah, or whatever your scheduling requirements are. So that's job one done. Now we have to create uh, also job two or three or four or yeah, any of the subsequent jobs that need to trigger at this uh, specific event. And what you do here is again, you set up your job, you do your steps and your normal procedures, what you need to do to set up a best job. And when you come to the scheduling parameters, or the, sorry, or the start conditions, then you go to after event, you click on the button after event and you specify the event that you have configured in step one and you specify the parameter which should be the same parameter what you put in step two and you saved it into a variant. And of course, most importantly, because we want this to run periodically, you also tick the periodic job tick mark and you save this job um, with this scheduling condition. So here I've, uh, I've taken a very simple example. I mean, even my you know, starting example is going to, is, was very simple because I had just job one which I will trigger job two and three to start. Here I've taken even more uh, simpler example because I only have job one and job two. But if you get the idea, you can use this to, you know, schedule uh, multiple jobs at the trigger point, which is actually generated by the last step of job one by calling BTC event raise program with, uh, with the proper variant. And of course, you know, job Two can also have a step which does a BTC event raise, which can you know uh, trigger a subsequent job. So 
I would say the possibilities are endless. And just to highlight the important links between these various steps, you just have to remember that uh, in step two you save the variant and that's the variant that you use in the, in the job where you want to raise the event. And the event parameter that you specify in step two should be the same event parameter that you specify uh, in the start condition. So that's how these things are linked together. And in the next part of this course, let's see how you actually set this up in the system.